Hello everyone and welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. Today on the table we have another Game of Thrones, a card game, second edition video for you. And we got a good one. This is the final table in the Joust United States National 2016 Championship held at Origins Game Fair in Columbus, Ohio. On the left, you've already seen him in a couple videos in the series. If you haven't, go back and watch it. We have Nate, he's playing Stark Fealty. And we have John, we've already seen him play too. And he is playing... Lannister, Banner of the Wolf. Two decks with start cards in it at the top table. Interesting. So on the left we have, uh, looks like Gates of Winterfell, a Rose Road. Asha and Septa Mordain set up for the Starks. And on the right, on the Lannister side, we have Sir Illyn Payne, Rick on Stark, and it looks like a King's Road. We've made it here, final table. The winner of this will be crowned United States National Champion for Game of Thrones The Card Game Second Edition for 2016 in the Joust format, which is the one-on-one -on -one format you're watching right now. There is a three to five player format, I guess, competitively. I think you can play it up to six now in second edition. But uh, there is a melee format, which we actually have the finals from the melee national championships coming up on the channel after this so make sure you subscribe that one's coming up soon and we have other regional videos coming up on the channel so hit that subscribe button it's free it supports the channel i'd appreciate it and we got plots flipped trading with Batoshi flipped on the stark side and a noble cause flipped on the lancer side a noble cause is going to reduce the first lord lady plays by two and trading with Batoshi, you see you gave three gold there to the lancer player it gives you 10 gold but gives three gold to your opponent which is the downside of it but uh so it was good when you want to bomb out a bunch of big dudes. So it looks like the Lancers are going first. All right, first action, let's eat Asha. And he's going to start it off by eating Asha. No messing around. She seems like a good target. Not sure if I would wait for economy though, but I guess when your opponent's dropping 11 gold plus fealty to start, uh, killing a Winterfell steward might not really stop much. But we have Sir Jamie Lannister played uh, using the Noble Cause Reduction and the King's Road for a gold, getting him out with a duplicate. And we have a Hound and Bran Stark put into play. So not a bad start for the Lannister player. I'm going to count 11 gold total. Yep. So let's see what the Starks do here with 11 gold. Plus their fealty reduction for a loyal card that they play each round. They do have to kneel their house card to get that minus one reduction. Like he needs it. He got some more economy. <laughs> the hard tree grove there. Looks like he's playing something loyal. He's knelt his house guard for fealty, and it's Catelyn Stark. When she's participating in a challenge, the opponent cannot trigger effects, card abilities, one of those things. Basically, stops some shenanigans. And looks like we get another brand on the table here. Who can be sacrificed to stop uh, events from being played. And there's the Aria trigger. Nate again allowing his opponent the option to cancel that Aria trigger. Being very courteous. Not rushing through the action windows. Great communication on Nate's part by the way. I watched him play quite a few games uh, this day and he was very consistent with it. So he's still got three gold. He's got a lady out now on Catelyn, and Catelyn is duplicated. It was three, I'm sorry. Three. So it looks like the Starks are done marshalling. Three cards in hand, three gold. Over to the Lannisters for challenges. Right, we will military with Jamie. So it looks like uh, Jamie's coming in for a military to start. He has five strength. And no defenders declared. And it looks like Catelyn's dupe uh, will be used to save her uh, for the military. Claim. 
And Jamie will gain a renown. And also a power for unopposed there on the Lancer's uh, house card. Putting the Lancer's up to two. And it looks like we got a one strength power challenge here with Bran Stark. There is no power to steal yet on the Stark player's house card. But uh, if it does go unopposed, uh, he would get an extra power. But Bran blocks Bran, so no power will be exchanged there. And no unopposed bonus. And that is the Lancer's challenges over to the Starks. Let's see what they got. We got an intrigue with Septa Mordain. Three strength, as you heard them uh, confirm there. And Septa has the ability, I uh, just had to look it up here. While you control Sansa Stark, Sansa will get plus two strength and renown. And while Arya Stark, who is on the board right now, uh, is in play with Septa, she'll gain an intrigue icon and immune to opponent's plot effects. So if a wildfire were played and Septa's on the board, you can't select Arya for, for death. She's immune to wildfire, first snow, those kind of things, as long as your opponent's playing it. But she does have that intrigue icon. So right now with that duplicate, she actually has all three icons in stealth. And we saw Lady move over there to make sure that the intrigue challenge was won. We had Jamie go down to try to block it. And there is Eddard Stark off the top of the deck using Gates and Winterfell. Well, it was nice to pull to see. So we have so we have winners coming here. I don't know if you want to brand that. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. Hands in or whatever. So we haven't gone to challenge resolution yet, actually. Gates of Winterfell was using the action window before determining winner. Should have been at least. And then same with uh, winner, winner is coming. So military challenge with uh, Arya Stark, Stealth and the Hound. We got two gold spent to drop a burn man in to block the unopposed. And we got that uh, awesome cameraman, Rob uh, St. John there, moving the camera around to make sure we got uh, the plots that are sliding off the uh, the mat there in the, into view. Would you mind? Put it aside. Here go. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, do you, you have no gold? I do. I'm going to do a power with cat. Catelyn Stark comes in on the power challenge. It looks like Bran Stark was chosen as military claim instead of the Burnmen. That's, uh, that's an interesting choice. So force reaction, bringing the Hound back there. So he did stuff that power challenge. And it looks like the Starks will take power for dominance. Oh, she wants her face? She is once per face. Oh, okay. I thought she was once Yep, you're good. And then stand in touch. Yep. And it looks like uh, Nate using a gold there to move Lady off of Septa before uh, before we went around to plots there. Doesn't want uh, doesn't want that card sitting on Septa. Most likely because she'd be the wildfire target and probably the march target, so you don't want to lose Lady. I apologize. I'll take your time. So we have building orders played on the Stark side and trading with Patoshi played on the Lancer side. So three gold will be given to the Stark player due to trading with Patoshi being played. So it sounds like Lancer player chose himself to go first. And let's see what the Stark player grabs from the building orders. 
I'm gonna put my money on Winterfell, but it's a milk of the poppy. Maybe you did not see Winterfell. Maybe he has one in hand. But a milk is not a bad pull in my opinion. Looks like Nate lining up his sleeves there. Saw, saw a sleeve upside down. I hate that too. So over to the Lannisters for marshalling. Let's see uh, see what he's going to do. He's going to do a marshalling action to start using Pain to kill Bran. And it looks like John the Lancer player is uh, paying seven straight gold to no, slap Tywin on the board. Of course that man. <laughs> oh, yeah, the banner of the wolf. <laughs> that would throw me off for sure. I can imagine. Uh, I'm going to milk the And a milk of the poppy on Arya Stark to get rid of her stealth and her military icon. She still yep. does have an intrigue icon thanks to Septa being on the board. Gold. And a power icon, of course. A little less harmful without that stealth, that's for sure. And we got uh, Stark marshalling a King's Road here. And he's going to pop it successfully. Still two gold sitting on the Lancer side. So he does have the option of uh, treachery. And we got that milk that we saw searched for with building orders. Uh, milking Tywin Lannister. So he's not going to get the plus two strength from the gold in play right now. And he's not going to be giving him plus one gold next round unless... Confiscation or something is played to get rid of that attachment before that. So Rob Stark thrown into play here. We saw Fealty Nell to help pay for him. Plus the King's Road. I'm gonna stop there, sit on five gold. So five gold saved on the Stark side here. And over to the Lannisters for challenges. So we got a military challenge here with Sir Jamie Lancer that doesn't need to kneel during military challenges. And the Burn Men. Now I believe he's doing that. He's got to put it to the sword, most likely. And uh, if Arya just blocks the unopposed, it's still not enough. But uh, Lady is there to be moved over. Oh, actually... Okay, did Gates of Winterfell there to try to draw a card. But it's a Rose Road, so he's not able to pull it. It has to be a start card. But uh, you could throw Rob Stark in here. Oh, well, actually, Arya does not have military icon. Uh, we've already talked about this. Come on, Rob. So, Rob Stark has to go in. If you want to prevent that, put to the sword option. So, claim one on the military here. And Septim Ordain will be chosen for claim. And Rob's going to stand himself off of his own reaction. And we see Jamie Lancer gain a power for renown. So power challenge with Arya Stark. Two strength. And no defenders declared. So the only power off the Lannister card now goes over to the Stark House card. And we'll get an unopposed bonus power gain. Putting the Starks at 4 power to the Lannisters 2. So Intrigue challenged with Catelyn. 6 strength because we have the Lady hanging off her there. Who does add a plus 2. I will walk that with Tywin and Jamie. 
It looks like Tywin and Jamie going down for the defense. Fully blocking. Military with Rob on a post. And now we got a military challenge with Rob Stark for five. Now, very interesting the way John defended with both Tywin and Jamie on that intrigue. But yet, let Rob Stark come in on a military of five strength while he has five gold and the possibility of a put to the sword smacking your Tywin or your Jamie. I guess Jamie had a dupe, but most likely killing your Tywin. You never put yourself in that position, but he did there. He played a little risky. Probably liked the cards in his hand a lot, but I don't know. I still would. I still would have just, you know, blocked the unopposed. Maybe lose a card. You do not want to lose Tywin to a put to the sword. Whether your opponent has it or not, the, the threat was there. All right, Marshall Wall flipped on the Lannister side, and we have uh, a time for Wolves flipped on the Stark side. I will be first player, and I will resolve your time for wolves first. So Lancer player chose himself to go first, and he's saying time for wolves will be triggered first. Which I think is a little strange. Maybe he wants to, uh, summer. and then summer goes into play, because you could just grab like a dire wolf pup, throw it into play, and march it. So I'm not sure why he let him do that, but uh, I'd rather see Arya marched. And we got Summer triggering an ability to bring Ban Bran, sorry, back to his hand from uh, the dead pile there. And so he's just gonna march to the wall, Summer. Bran goes in my hand. Sure Summer is. comes in play. Yep. And we will reserve resolve the march. And it looks like Arya Stark's going for the march. I guess it gets rid of that Milk of the Poppy. Maybe he has another copy of Arya in hand. Or knows he does have two more coming in his deck. So it's a way he can get off that Milk of the Poppy, I guess. So at that point, I guess Arya was pretty useless to only having a power icon and two strength. There's Bran put into play. I thought Bran was chosen for claim. I could be wrong. There was his star card at the bottom there in John's dead pile. Thought it was Bran, but. So we have a King's Road playing on the Stark side. Tywin still has that milk of the poppy on him. So still choking the economy of John there. Does not have any locations in play to help him out. Neil, yes. you got it. Neil. Four. So here goes the King's Road, the Hartree Grove knelt, and Fealty. And we see Grey Wind joining Rob Stark on the battlefield. Like he has some options here. He spent two gold, but he hasn't put anything into play yet. Oh, nope, he's brought it back. You're fine. Do you have any actions? I don't know. I'm, I have no martial hands. <laughs> I see what's happening here. Nate doesn't want to pay two gold to put something into play that Illin Payne's just going to whack with his sword there. So I think he's given the option. He's he's asking John if he has any actions. He's trying to see if he'll just whack Summer, so that way he can play, play his Bran Stark, or uh, whatever, ever, what other two cost characters he has in hand. I'll pay three. So he's gonna pay three. He doesn't have another Arya, which is most likely why we saw her marched, and she's gonna get a dupe. 
So if you have an action now. Yeah, now it's. Yes. So Nate allowing the Sir Ilan Payne uh, option here to trigger if John would like. I will kill Summer. And there we go. Summer is chosen to be killed. I'm not sure if Summer was the best call there. I most likely would have still hit uh, Arya, try to get rid of that duplicate to uh, prevent that uh, military icon with the stealth there. And then maybe get her next turn with a nice, uh, a nice uh, ill and pain kill. So Septa from Gates of Winterfell there, extra card draw. Uh, but she is in the dead pile, so she will be a dead card in hand. Kill Bran. So we have Grey Wind's trigger here to kill Bran Stark. Oh, it's with a seven. Um, Looks like we have a. Before claim. Block nope. here. I'm not I'm sure if it was military or power challenge with Tywin, but uh, oh, it was military. It was a military challenge. Oh, I see. With Tywin and Jamie, military challenge. And we had uh, Rob and Arya block. Arya was chosen for claim, not saved, so he was able to trigger Rob Stark to stand no everyone. I have no power on my house. Get some extra use out of Grey Wind there by uh, kneeling him as an action to kill before standing, which was pretty sweet. That would be so we have an intrigue challenge of six here with Catelyn Stark. No defenders. And we have uh, Fast Eddard here, grabbed for claim. And there goes Grey Wind killing the steward. You have no gold? No gold. And we have the military challenge pushed in with Rob Stark. Jamie Lannister will block the unopposed, but uh, Payne will be chosen as claim. And Rob will gain a renown. So the Stark, the Stark uh, player, Nate here, and his deck putting some good pressure on this Lannister player, John. Um, whittling down his board like we've seen him do in past games. It's just the constant pressure. Get your board nice and small. Are we going to see a march to the wall here? Probably. From the Starks. And there it is. March to the wall. Confiscation played to get that milk of the poppy off Tywin. Starks are at 9 power. Lannister's at 4. And Nate's chosen John, the Lancer player, to go first. I'm assuming, actually, I guess I don't know what you're hitting. You get to decide plot order, too. I know. Yep. So John needs to decide which plot's going off first. He could march Tywin, get rid of that milk of the poppy, and then confiscate Lady. Or he could get rid of the milk of the poppy and march Jamie. He's going to look at his uh, t three cards in hand there. Try to help him make his decision. Confiscation first. And I will discard Lady. So we got confiscation going off first. Lady's going away. And Tywin's going for the march. So Milk the Poppy falls off. My milk. And I said you are first. You did, so let's stretch it. We saw a burn men draw in there. On the Lancer side. So four gold collected, three spent on the Lannister side here. To put the Hound into play. Very similar state to the previous game we saw, uh, where Brian, the Lannister crossing player, was put in a similar position, where he was marched and only had Tywin left, and Hound was all he could play. It just doesn't seem like enough.
Now, if he kept Tywin on the board and had that two extra gold, who knows what he could extra he could have played. Two. But uh, he felt Jamie is the better call there. I'm not too sure about that. So we have a Wilding Scout put into play here. And Winterfell is now in play. And no gold saved on the Stark side. He used Fealty to help play that Winterfell. And we're going over to challenges on the Lancer side. We've got Jamie coming in for a military to start. Five strength. And Gates of Winterfell is going to try to draw a card here. And it is a Tumblestone Knight. It will go to hand. It is a Stark card. Just Jamie. Just Jamie. And Grey Wind's going to block with five, but it's not enough to win. And we have the Winterfell Steward chosen his claim. Rob Stark triggers, stands Grey Wind. And John decides to pass over to the Starks for their challenges. And we got an intrigue to start here with the Wildling Scout, two strength. Like no defenders declared. Get an unopposed bonus. There's another copy of Fast Eddie going to the discard pile. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm getting lucky. Though. Nah. He actually did not have a great draw this game, but I didn't have a good enough draw to capitalize on it. So. So a power challenge here with Rob Stark. Six strength, plus one from the Winterfell. And that is enough that the Hound can't stop it. So he might have to let this go on a pose if he wants to stop the military, which is going to come through most likely with Grey Wind for five strength. He does have one gold, uh, the Lancer player does, so he could have a Widow's Whale. We haven't seen Winterfell trigger to stop any shenanigans, but it doesn't stop Ambush. And no defenders declared. So the Stark player is shot up here to 10 on the house card, 3 on Rob, 13. And Wilding, Souths, Wilding Scout sacrificed to give stealth to Grey Wind, stealthing the Hound. Which is going to make him 5 strength off Winterfell there, stealthing the Hound leaves 5 from. Jamie, and the Hound has chosen his claim. Dominance to the Lannisters. So we're at 13 on the Starks, and uh, we got uh, 5 power for the Lannisters. See first Snow of Winter there in the Lannisters plot deck. Not a good choice right now. It's not going to really hurt anyone, but... Uh, He's going to play Calm over Westeros into Wardens of the North. And uh, Stark player has chosen to go first. Power is chosen for Calm over Westeros. Makes sense. Trying to slow him down a little bit. And let's see what the Starks marshal here. Six gold. And we got John just conceding based on what he drew. Just knows it's not enough. And uh, congrats to Nate. Uh, as you see him there with his nice Ash uh, Pokemon cosplay he brought to the convention. And you see Nate French there, and uh, Ryan Grant, who was helping judge the competition. And uh, thanks to everyone in FFG's organized play who was there to uh, host the tournament, and everyone at Origins Game Fair for running an awesome convention. And like I said, congrats to Nate on the win. He is now the United States 2016 National Champion for Game of Thrones Joust. And I want to thank all of you guys for watching. Thanks for supporting the channel. Make sure you hit subscribe to be notified. we got lots more games coming up. Like I said, we have the Melee Finals coming up on the channel. And uh, if you missed any games before this in this national series, you can go back and watch those. They're in a playlist and see the road to this match. We've seen a lot of these players, or see, sorry, we've seen these players in a lot of other matches uh, in this series. So you can go back and watch those. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.